Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. Today I'm going to be doing a makeover on this little secretary desk right here. It's not very big, it's kind of a smaller piece, so I wanna make it a statement piece. What I did is I challenged myself. So if you guys have been following my journey, I live in Germany, I am going to move to the US here in literally like three weeks. And so I kept only a specific amount of products back so that I could really challenge myself on creating something. So <laughs> I'll show you guys, but I kept back a couple things from different companies and I said, you know what, Kersana, you're going to have to see if you can do something with it. So we're going to do what I always say. We're going to trust the process on this one. We're going to hope that I set aside the right things and left the right things for myself. And if I didn't, well, we're gonna learn this together. So if you guys wanna see that, stay here. As with all of my pieces, I make sure that I clean them really, really well before I do anything else with them. And then what I'm gonna do is use a color by Purico called Denim. Purico is a paint company out of Australia and this is their chalk line. So I'm going to mix denim in with some salt wash, which is a texture additive. And I am going to apply this to the entire piece. But when I'm mixing this salt wash into this paint, I want to make sure I get kind of like a brownie like batter consistency before I apply it to the piece. And then once I do that, I'm going to stipple this all over. When I am applying this mixture, I am pouncing it with my brush in different areas. And then you can also take a little bit of the mixture and you can brush it on and then pounce it. And that allows you to spread it a little bit faster. But I have this on its back so that way I can work on the bottom and get the legs. And then what I did is I put it upright so that I could finish the entire piece. What I did is I laid it on its back after I had added the texture additive and what I'm going to do because the paint is a little bit damp is I'm going to sprinkle some of the salt wash on there because what we're going to do is we're going to use that salt wash as a resist. So with the wet paint, it's going to stick a little bit better and then we're going to spray it with some water. But later on when I scrape it back, it's going to create a resist. And so when I scrape it back, you're going to be able to see that denim color underneath. I am going to spray the top of this texture additive with water just so that we can make sure it's going to stick to the surface and then I am going to allow this to completely dry. I usually let it sit overnight just to thoroughly dry and I do do all the other sides. So I flip it over on the side, do the same thing, flip it on the other side, do the same thing and then I allow it to sit for quite a bit of time to dry. After it's completely dry, I'm going to add my layer of paint. Now, remember, if you've watched this before, this texture additive may flake off, so make sure that you are pouring your paint into separate containers so that you're not contaminating your actual containers. But the very bottom and up the sides, I am using the color called Firebird by Purico, and I'm just going to do two layers of each of these colors. The next color I am adding is called Rosewood by Purico Paint, and these are all of their chalk line paints. And I'm going to go up the center a little bit and then overlap the sides and go up the sides. So I'm overlapping the Firebird with the Rosewood. The last color I'm going to use is called Dandelion and that is also by Purico Paint and I am going to cover all the way up the center and overlap the rosewood with this one. Mm -hmm. 
After I applied two coats of each color and let them dry, now I'm gonna go in and blend. So the thing about Purico's chalk paint is that it's going to lighten when it dries. So don't let that alarm you. Once you, once you seal it, it's going to darken back up. But I'm adding the Firebird first and then I added that over the other area and now I'm adding rosewood and I'm going to use circular motions to go into the firebird with the rosewood so that I can melt these together and blend these colors together and then I'm going to mist it and I'm going to take my cristana brush and I am going to just feather and go horizontal and vertically to do a final blend with these these paints blend really really nicely and those colors are super similar so they're going to blend even better. Next we're going to blend the rosewood into the dandelion and so what I'm going to do is take some rosewood and I'm going to apply it in an overlap where the dandelion is and then I'm going to switch brushes and I'm going to take the dandelion and I'm going to overlap the rosewood and then I'm going to do circular motions so that I can start to blend these together and I'm going to toggle between the two paints and just overlap and do circles go vertical go horizontal because because what we want to do is we want to blend all of these together and then once I've kind of had a rough blend I'm going to mist it and then I'm going to take my final blending brush which is my Cristana brush and I am going to go horizontal and then I'm going to go vertical you can also go diagonal and this is going to blend all of these colors really well together After everything is dry, I am going to scrape off all of the areas where we put that salt wash before. Remember, we're using that as a resist. Now, I know that when we're scraping this off, it doesn't look like there is blue showing through. What you're gonna do is you're going to take a dry brush and you're going to just brush over top of it because all that is is dust. And so you're just going to kind of dry, dry brush over top of those areas that are white so that you can get that white off. And also later on when we seal it, you're going to be able to see the blue. After I've scraped everything off, and I have wiped over so you can brush over with a dry brush or you can take a microfiber cloth and wipe over everything to get that excess dust off. I'm going to apply a decor transfer and this one is called Petite Tiles by Redesign with Prima, but it is too wide. So I am taking a mixing stick and I am just kind of tracing over the areas where the edges are. So that way when I flip it over, I'll know where I need to cut with my scissors so that I can fit it properly. After I'd cut the edges, I'm going to remove the transfer from the protective backing and I am going to carefully place it from the center moving out. And then I am going to take a burnishing stick and I am going to burnish this and transfer it on to this piece.
I did want to distress this, so I took my carbide scraper and I went over the transfer after I had burnished the entire thing, so that way I could make it look like it was worn. I want to add a layer of crackle to age it even more, so I am going to use the Polyvine two-part crackle. This is the base. What you're going to do is you're going to apply a layer of this base anywhere that you want the crackle and you're going to allow it to fully dry. Now when it dries, it's going to turn clear. It's not going to look white like that, but it's not going to actually be dry. It is going to be tacky. So anywhere that you're applying this, you need to make sure that you are applying the top coat as well. Otherwise it's going to be a tacky area. The next step is to add the top coat of the two part crackle over all the places where you put the base and you're going to allow that to fully dry. And then once we add the paint wash, you're going to be able to see those cracks. I'm going to create a wash mixture with the color Dark Roast by Country Chic Paint and it's a super super dark brown. I'm going to add a little bit of water and then this is going to create a wash so that way I can put this over top of my piece and it's not only going to add an aging effect but it is also going to embed into that crackle, that two part crackle so that way it, you actually can see it once you wipe it back. Once the mixture is the consistency that I want, I am going to take a paintbrush and I am going to essentially paint over the entire piece. And then what I'm going to do is take a microfiber cloth and wipe it back. Now, if there are areas where it is dried a little bit too much, that's not a big deal. You can just spritz it with some water and wipe it back. But what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to add these little aging areas into the cracks and crevices. And then once we wipe back from that crackle, you're going to be able to see that two part crackle a little bit better. See right here when we get a little bit closer the cracks and you can see where it's in the cracks and crevices country chic is an all-in-one paint so we do not need to put a sealer over top of this and so once i have applied this to the entire piece we allow it to fully dry and it is going to cure and it is going to be ready so thank you guys so much for watching i'm sorry i didn't get to do an exit video but i will see you guys next time and happy creating hey Tell you what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in